Hello, my name is Kevin, KC8MTV. I'm an amateur radio operator here in Central Virginia, and I'm the uh, owner of the 145.290 megahertz repeater. Um, also have a Wires X room set up called Virginia, uh, which is Wires X node number 21625. I like to share my contact information, uh, especially my phone number. I'm not paranoid about sharing phone numbers, uh, but I do like to, to share my contact information. So if there's any repeater problems going on or any uh, node problems, uh, uh, like with the Virginia room, that uh, you can contact me. So please feel free to contact me at any time. All right, let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and move on uh, into the uh, presentation. And uh, I'd like to give credit to David uh, Holmgren, K9AT, and also Yesu for uh, the graphics, uh, some of this uh, graphics in this presentation. Uh, David put together a fantastic um, uh, presentation, and I just tweaked it a little bit and added some of uh, the information relevant to the uh, Virginia room and uh, the nodes here in Central Virginia. So I wanted to throw a shout out to Dave Hol Holmgren, K9AT, and uh, also Yesu. All right. I know there's a couple hams out there that enjoy food, if not all hams. <laughs> and uh, one thing we have to remember that uh, when we go grocery shopping, at least if you're normal, you don't buy the same thing every week. Uh, you, you like to enjoy different varieties of food. And um, that's the same thing with amateur radio. You know, way back in the day, we had, uh, we had ham radio that started out with tubes and uh, we slowly advanced and through that advancement, uh, we had different, uh, different varieties, different flavors of amateur radio. And that's the great thing about amateur radio. It's like a smorgasbord. So everybody and anybody involved in the amateur radio hobby can find something uh, to, uh, to feast on. And uh, I know myself, I really enjoy satellite operation. Um, I enjoy antenna designing. And I know Mike out there, he enjoys soda, the summits on the air. Uh, there's, there's something for everybody. <clears throat> something new and fun to try that has uh, just recently come up in the uh, amateur radio field is digital. And uh, yes, digital has been around for a while, uh, but Yesu has brought into uh, the market for amateur radio operators to enjoy, what is called Yesu System Fusion. They've also incorporated C4FM and Wires X. But one thing I want you all to remember is these words, or these, uh, yeah, these words here are not interchangeable. They do not mean the same thing. And so that's, uh, that's one of the things we're gonna talk about. We're gonna talk about Yesu System Fusion as a product line of radio products that Yesu has put out. We're gonna talk about C4FM mode, which is just like FM mode, AM mode, sideband mode, upper and lower sideband. It's a mode of operation. And we're gonna talk about Wires X. Wires X is a name or a term given by Yesu for their internet or their, their network that connects uh, radios uh, together. So these three things you have to understand all mean separate things. Yesu System Fusion is a product line. C4FM is a mode of operation. Wires X is a network. It is specifically Yesu's network. And we obviously are, uh, well, I know there's a lot of people that are excited um, that Yesu has come out with this new product line, uh, specific, uh, specifically the Yesu System Fusion. All right. 
Again, my name is Kevin, KC8MTV. I do have a YouTube channel, if you're interested in writing this information down, uh, youtube.com forward slash KC8MTV. Um, I've originally started this YouTube channel, gosh, I can't ha remember how many years ago it's been, but uh, I had a club member in Ohio that was asking me for information on how to do something specific uh, with a, um, a Yesu radio and um, I said tell you what let me make a short video for you I'll put it on YouTube and uh, you know I think it's it's better that you see me actually do it than try and talk you through it over the phone and uh, next thing I know <laughs> I've got like 40 what is it 47,000 views on this one particular video so I went from making this video for one person to, you know, 47,000 hams watching it. I've, I've, I've gotten calls from out in California asking me permission to use uh, a couple of my videos uh, for their club pre presentations out there. So I, I thought that was pretty cool. Um, so, yeah, check that out. I've got a few videos on there that you might find helpful. The goals of this presentation, again, uh, I want to keep, keep the presentation simple. As I stated earlier, you, you could make a, a, a college course out of this uh, entire uh, technology that Yesu's coming up with, and we're, we're just going to be touching, touching the tip of it. Um, I'd like to tell the Yesu fusion story, uh, adding key elements, and those key elements being system fusion, C4FM and Wires X. And hopefully we can uh, create an interest and uh, get more users on board. Mainly what I would like to do is I would like to have people uh, have a better understanding of this. That's what I would really like to do. Uh, when I first came down here to Virginia and, and I hosted a node up in Ohio, uh, we uh, we had it on our repeater system up there, and then when I came down to Virginia three years ago, nobody wanted anything to do with it. And uh, come to find out, it wasn't because nobody liked it, or nobody had any negative uh, uh, you know uh, experiences with it. The problem was they didn't know anything about it, and they didn't want them, <laughs> they didn't want anything to do with it. Well, that's obviously changed. So hopefully we can do that here as well. Um, pretty much the agenda for tonight, we're, we're going to talk about what C4FM is. Um, and briefly, we, we discussed how the product line inter introduction, the Yesu system fusion enabled radios, uh, the repeaters. Uh, uh, Yesu has done a fantastic job uh, with their repeaters and uh, the technology um, that they've come up with, and we'll talk about that. Obviously, we'll talk about the Yesu Wires X network, uh, the C4FM digital mode or protocol, and um, is Wires X really that active in Virginia? Well, we'll show you. And then uh, hopefully Mike and I can do a demonstration, and then after the presentation, we'll we'll have a question and answer period. All right, first of all, what is C4FM? Well, C4FM, first of all, has been around for a long time. It's not something brand new. Uh, I'm sure many of you have heard, uh, especially the older guys, have heard of P25, DMR, D-Star. Well, now C4FM has come into the, uh, the amateur radio realm and uh, basically C4FM is just four level FSK, frequency shift keying. Um, the cool thing about the, the C4FM mode and the Yesu uh, fusion radios is that there's no radio programming or code plugs required um, to operate. Uh, basically, it's plug and play. Uh, the um, the three modes of operation, and we'll show a, a demo of that here later. Uh, we have a digital only, uh, which incorporates two, um, two options. We have analog only, which is the all familiar analog FM. 
and we have a mixed mode, digital and analog. Uh, which is uh, accessed through what's called AMS, or Automatic Mode Select. And earlier in the meeting, somebody had mentioned uh, if somebody's carrying on a conversation and um, uh, an analog signal comes in, well, what's going to happen is, and we'll cover this here in a minute, uh, the repeater's automatically going to default back to the analog. Uh, that's another cool feature that Yesu incorporated into their repeaters um, is that analog takes priority. All right, automatic mode, uh, uh, the AMS mode, uh, switching the receiver radio to the same mode. Um, so, for example, we're going to use, uh, we'll say m m myself and, and Mike, um, W4MAF, if he and I are talking digital through a DR2X Yaesu repeater and we're carrying on a conversation and somebody jumps in there on an HT talking digital, we can all have a very nice conversation with very clear audio using the C4FM uh, mode or protocol. So what's happening is, and I, I don't want to get too detailed, but I'm just going to say what's happening is your analog voice signal is being compressed into zeros and ones, and it becomes a digital signal, and it's uh, sent out over the air. All right, so this is all happening within the DR2X. If somebody comes in on a, I know right here it says an FT8900, but say somebody comes in on a, a, a Kenwood, uh, a, a Kenwood TM D710, okay? Well, what's going to happen to these three guys that were talking via the digital? Well, thanks to Yesu, they have programmed an AMS mode into the repeater. And what's going to happen, this guy down here talking in FM analog, because he keyed up in analog, that signal's going to go to the repeater, and the repeater's going to say, all right, guys, we got to switch to analog. The repeater is going to send a signal out to each of the digital subscriber or the people talking on digital, and it's going to automatically switch their radios to analog mode. So this guy has keyed up. The repeater is telling the digital... Uh, Guys, if you could uh, mute your microphone, I'd appreciate it. These guys will now be switched over to analog. And again, that's, a, that's an awesome feature that the DR1, the, D, uh, the DR1X, and the DR2X have installed. Now, um, let's see here. Let's move on. All right, what is C4FM mode? All right, this is, this is the exciting part uh, about the clarity of, of uh, the C4FM mode in talking. What happens is there's, two, there's actually two C4FM uh, digital modes. We have what's called a digital narrow, and we have what's called a voice wide mode. Now, with the digital narrow, what's happening is you have... 12.5 kilohertz uh, spectrum uh, in this C4FM mode. Half of that, 6.25 kilohertz, consists of voice, your call sign, and your GPS latitude and longitude. Okay, so again, your voice, your call sign data, and your latitude and longitude data are converted to zeros and ones and sent within that 6.25 kilohertz uh, bandwidth spectrum. The other part of that 12.5 kilohertz uh, spectrum is used for data error correction. Okay? When you look at the voice wide, which is also 12.5 kilohertz, your voice and your call sign information 
use up the entire 12.5 kilohertz spectrum with no forward error correction and no GPS data. So what's going to happen is, obviously, you're going to have more bandwidth there. You're going to have a, a, a much clearer audio. Now, when I say you're going to have a clearer audio than, than the, uh, the digital narrow, you could hardly tell. You, I mean, you have to be listening for it because if, 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 if you were just driving down the road and somebody switched from digital narrow to voice wide, you would not consciously pick it up. It's, it's that clear. So when you have a radio um, that you've purchased that is a Yesu system fusion radio, um, you will, when you first turn it on, you will program in your call sign. And that's, uh, that's where this information uh, is uh, grabbed from. It's, it's from the uh, call sign that you, uh, you program in. Now, I wanted to go back here a slide. I, I forgot to mention this whole thing here is called Yesu System Fusion. Okay, this is their product line of radios that do automatic mode uh, select. Okay, the the automatic switching that is where the terminology Yesu System Fusion came from. It's the ability to switch. Uh, automatically. All right. Now, the GPS coordinates. Now, this guy here, uh, he was uh, conducting a CUSO with somebody 3,489 miles away. All right. And he was connected through a, uh, a WiresX room or a WiresX node. So, this GPS coordinate that he programmed into his radio. Okay, and the guy at the other end that he's having a QSO with also had his GPS coordinates plugged in. All right, so they, uh, th through the radio software, it calculates the distance point to point from uh, point A to point B. That's a pretty cool feature. You can, you can actually see how, how far somebody is on a QSO. You want to know something else that's cool about the Fusion family of radios? You can do it on HF. You can actually operate C4FM, which is a mode. You can actually operate it. In this case, it was 10 meters. You can change the, uh, the, uh, the calculation to show kilometers or miles. In this case, it was miles, but this guy's, you know, like 9,000 kilometers on his QSO. And that's on 10 meters. How many other radios do that? So that's another cool thing that uh, Yesu's done. They haven't limited it to 2 meters and 70 centimeters. They've opened it up to HF as well. Wires X. Okay, so we, we know what Yesu System Fusion is. That's the family of radios. And we know what C4FM is. C4FM is the actual mode. What is Wires X? Well, Wires X is a feature that actually extends the range, uh, either analog or digital repeaters. Now, uh, a, a few slides later here, we'll talk about the, the analog and Wires X. You can operate it in what's called a standalone simplex mode. You can actually operate a Wires X node at your house on a simplex frequency, and you could walk around the neighborhood on your HT walking the dog, and uh, you could be on your own, you know, on a simplex frequency and, and uh, get on the Yesu Wires X network. Uh, like the other digital modes, the internet connection takes you beyond the geographical uh, location of the repeater. And, you know, this is really beneficial, especially to new hams um, that may not have uh, a, a lot of HF privileges. That was one of the reasons that we started the Wires X um, uh, network and the uh, uh, node that we had up in Ohio because our repeater was dead. I mean, 
I don't know what had happened, but there was one year it was like everybody just quit talking on it, and, and it, it was getting frustrating. Uh, you'd throw your call out, and nobody would come back to you. And uh, we brought it up in a meeting one time. Hey, you know, we've got a, uh, we've got a Fusion repeater at the time. It was a DR1 uh, 1X repeater. And uh, the suggestion was made, hey, let's, uh, let's hook it up to the Yesu Wires X network. Let's uh, get a, a, a node and uh, see if we can't bring some traffic to the repeater. And lo and behold, it was like everybody come out of the woodwork and started talking on the repeater. And uh, it, was, uh, it was really a beneficial thing. All right. Uh, like I said, a little trivia. You know, the first digital radios appeared in the 80s. And, uh, you know, we talked about the P25 and whatnot, and uh, Yesu uh, has brought the uh, C4FM mode to the amateur radio community here, I want to say it was like 10 years ago. I can't remember the exact date. <clears throat> All right. Um, I'm missing a, a few radios here because I, I was running out of room, but uh, again... This is the, the Yesu System Fusion product line. Uh, we've got a DR1X, DR2X, which is the latest and greatest. Um, the FTM 400, there's a 300 out. We got the, the, the um, FT3, uh, there's an FT2, FT70 that I'm missing on here, uh, the 991. Um, and also they've included the uh, Wires X uh, uh, interface as well. But, oh, and there's a FT, uh, what is it, FTM 7250, I believe, is out now as well. So there are a lot of these radios that are out there. And again, because these are system fusion, that simply means that they will switch from analog to digital, analog to digital, analog to digital, all of these automatically <clears throat> so if you're carrying on a digital communication over c4 fm with anybody and somebody keys up in analog they will switch automatically all right simplex you could be driving down the road um let's see uh there is a simplex frequency that we use a lot, um, 146.520. Everybody's familiar with that. Uh, that's uh, analog uh, national calling frequency on simplex. It's very uh, inappropriate to use C4FM mode over the 146.52 analog calling frequency because the guys that are in... Uh, analog mode are going to hear a god awful sound, and it's just that's not uh, that's not good uh, amateur radio practices. So we do have a frequency that is uh, being adopted uh, to be used as a simplex C4 FM frequency, but you can carry on C4 FM um, in a simplex uh, uh, situation. And if I get my graphics working here, so the simplex frequency is 145.5625. So if you guys can write that down, and if anybody's got a Yesu System Fusion enabled radio, you'll uh, be want to want to be sure to to plug that frequency in 145.5625. And that is considered the, uh, the uh, national C4FM simplex frequency. Now, from what I'm hearing and what I'm understanding, this is not gospel, but hearing through the Internet, um, this is something that, that Yesu is trying to push as, a, um, as an acceptable frequency. This is not uh sanctioned by the ARRL or the FCC or anybody like that uh, but I think <clears throat> it was something that that Yesu was trying to push uh, to advertise as a frequency for C4 FM all right repeater and C4 FM 
earlier we talked about that a little bit uh, using the uh, DR1X or the DR2X repeater you can obviously carry on conversations through the repeater uh, from point to point uh, using C4FM now C4FM via the internet now there's two things uh, I wasn't sure how to cover it um, but later on we'll talk about another fantastic feature with the DR2X repeater is that you can purchase the option to have an Ethernet card actually installed in the repeater. And that's what I did uh, with the uh, 145.290 repeater here at Bear Den. Uh, when I purchased the, uh, the uh, repeater, I think it was only like an extra 150, 200 bucks. And for an extra 150 or 200 bucks, you can get an Ethernet card put into that repeater. And if you have another DR2X repeater, you could actually link them up point to point without having to go through a Wires X, uh, Yesu Wires X network, okay? Because, uh, like I stated before, when you hook up a Wires X um, uh, network, you're going through the Yesu uh, servers, and we'll we'll discuss that here later. But if you get your repeater installed with the network or with the ethernet card you just plug in an ethernet cable to a router on one end and an ethernet cable and a router on the other end and you're configuring your ip addresses and your subnet you've got your own lan okay so you're going to have your own lan set up right here I mean, we could have, I'm just hypothetical, one in Richmond, one in, in Waynesboro. And we could be connected on our own LAN through the WAN. So if there's any network guys out there, I'm sure you understand what I'm talking about. That's a cool thing. Very cool feature. Uh, but in this case, you can always have a Wires X um, uh, network as well using an interface. And we'll talk about that. Okay, again, what is Wires X? Wires X is the Yesu network connecting the system fusion radios through the internet. It requires an interface called an HRI 200, or if you have done the firmware update, if you have an older radio, you can operate in what's called a PDN node. All right. So the difference being, if you have a HRI 200, you can actually connect that to a repeater. And when somebody in a mobile or HT or at home link, uh, connects to that repeater, they will go through the Wires X uh, uh, in, or the HRI 200 interface out through the Wires X network and they will be able to uh, communicate with other nodes or rooms around the planet. Okay, so the HRI 200 is simply an interface with a USB port and uh, two ports to interface into the radio or the repeater. We also have what's called a PDN node, which is a personal node. And let me move to the next slide. Oh, well, first of all, before I move on, uh, with your PDN node, Yesu provides you a user ID. So when you uh, when you sign up, uh, uh, you will be given a user ID. With the HRI 200, you'll be given a user ID, but you'll also get a room ID. So the difference between a PDN node and an HRI 200 is the HRI 200 will actually allow you to host a room. The PDN node will not allow you to host a room. You'll be able to go to different rooms via the required software because you have to have the Wires X software, but you will not be able to host your own room. Obviously, you want to create a room that's uh, pretty unique and, and uh, 
Uh, we know the uh, uh, Richmond uh, Rats group has created Richmond, which is uh, a very good name considering where it's located. All right, what can an HRI, uh, HRI 200 attach to? Again, it's an interface. It, it, it allows you to connect a radio through the HRI 200 out the USB port to your laptop desktop, which is connected to the internet. You can also use an analog radio. Yes, you can actually use an analog radio to go through the Wires X network. And of course, a Yaesu Fusion enabled repeater. All right, Simplex node. Uh, it's a great option to access Wires X uh, network when a local Fusion repeater does not have a node. So this is this is how I started up in Ohio. Uh, we had a, uh, um, a DR1X repeater, but we did not we didn't even have internet at the site, and so we didn't have a, a node. So I started up a simplex node on 70 centimeters. Uh, I picked out a 70 centimeter uh, frequency that was not busy, and uh, I hooked up a, a HRI 200 uh, to an FTM 400 radio that I had on the digital side because I was just messing around with digital. And I also had one connected up on port one, or I'm sorry, port two. I had a Yesu FT. 1500 if you remember those radios back in the day those were one of those radios that was basically a heat sink and they dug it out and put some parts inside of it and uh, I operated that on on um, a two meter simplex and then of course it was plugged into my my computer but basically uh, you know an FTM 100 400 any of the the uh, Yesu radios out there that that uh, are able to uh, connect through a, uh, a port on the back of the radio can plug in to the uh, HRI 200. Now, <clears throat> there, there are two uh, different type cables. We have a 10 pin port, uh, which is for the digital side of the HRI 200. We also have a six pin analog port, uh, which is uh, on the back of the HRI 200 on the other side. And that's the one I had the, uh, the FT 1500 uh, plugged into for the analog. And then of course you'll need a PC running the WiresX software, which we'll show you here later as well. All right, two ways to use a node. Long versus short range coverage. Um, and again, this is kind of what I was talking about, uh, you know, um, earlier walking around the neighborhood. Uh, you can set up a node, and this is what I did at my home. I had uh, an FTM 400. I had purchased two of them. I had one in my, my truck, and uh, I was able <coughs> to contact uh, my node through my house on the 70 centimeter simplex frequency. Um, and then that was interfaced into the FTM 400 uh, through the HRI 200 to a laptop, a dedicated laptop that I had, and that went out on the Yaesu Wires X network. And then, like I said, you could also set it up to where you're walking around the neighborhood, talk it on your HT back to your home. Same process. Now, with, with radios today, and this is another cool feature with Yesu, through firmware update, through firmware update, they have eliminated the need for this HRI 200 um, simply by a firmware update, okay? And you can run this, this radio into what's called a PDN node, taking those cables that I showed you in the previous slide, okay? And you can actually uh, interface a, a USB cable directly from your laptop or desktop into your, uh, into your radio. Now, you're operating the WireZX software which enables you to uh, change rooms 
but because you do not have the HRA 200, you cannot host a room or create a room. Okay, <clears throat> you can merely uh, go through the software and pick a room to connect to. But still, that's that's an awesome awesome feature, and if you want to get into um, uh, creating your own um, uh, WireZX uh, inter or your uh, own interface to the WireZX network, definitely go this route. You you do not need an HRI 200, not at all. All right, this was the uh, DR1X repeater. <clears throat> And um, again, you have to have that 10-pin uh, connector on this port, uh, which is the, the port that's used for uh, the, uh, the digital. Um, additional features of the node radio. It can be used as an RF relay link for a repeater. Okay, we all know what an RF relay link is. And particularly, that is the situation I'm in right now. Uh, up at the uh, 145.290 repeater uh, on Bear Den Mountain here on the Skyline Drive, um, I, I think many of you know that I'm a uh, cell site technician for Sprint. And uh, I did not have any internet access up there. We had, uh, of course, uh, 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 access for, for our uh, sprint equipment, but obviously I can't uh, have access to that network. So what I ended up doing was, because I was in a position to have a sprint hotspot with unlimited data, uh, <clears throat> I put a sprint hotspot up at the site and uh, was able to, uh, to operate the uh, wires X node uh, from the site up there. Uh, the problem with that was I learned quickly that during the winter uh, when there was issues going on, uh, you know, the laptop locked up or, or, or something like that, and I couldn't get back into the laptop because I did have uh, uh, remote access to it. I used uh, TeamViewer, um, but sometimes it would lock up and there'd be snow on the ground. I, I couldn't get up the mountain to take care of it. So I thought you know what, I'm just going to host this remotely. <clears throat> so what I've done is I've got my FTM 400 here uh, with the HRI 200, and I've gone into the software, into the WireZX software, and I have simply put in the repeater input and output frequencies. So what I'm doing is I'm using an RF link from my house here because uh, I've got line of sight to the repeater, and uh, I've just got... Uh, uh, an RF link set up. So you can do that if you do not have internet at a repeater site, which is a uh, very cost-effective way to to get a WireZX node uh, connected uh, to your repeater. The DR2X Fusion Repeater, in my opinion, it, it, it does everything. I mean, a, uh, it, it does analog, it does digital, it does automatic mode selecting, which is automatically switches from analog to digital. Uh, but like I said earlier, the inclusion of this, what's called an IMS or IMRS Ethernet card is just the bomb. Um, the uh, automatic mode select, like I said, I don't know if there's any other repeaters out there. Uh, I haven't really kept up on the other repeater uh, makers out there, manufacturers, uh, but uh, having an automatic mode select where analog takes precedence is, I think, pretty cool. Oh, the other cool thing about this repeater, uh, I have a 12-volt uh, battery connected to my repeater. Now, at the repeater site, we have a 36,000-watt 36, 36, generator on site, but for some reason, after a commercial AC failure, it takes 15 to 20 seconds for the repeater or for the uh, generator to kick on. Now, our cellular equipment has battery backup, and I thought, you know what, I need battery backup on this repeater. So uh, it supports auto switch backup uh, battery power operation. So in the back of the repeater, there's a 12 volt input that you can plug in. And it trickle charges the battery, 
but if there's a if it senses a commercial AC failure, it automatically switches over to the battery without any uh, interruption, which I just think is really cool as well. All right, we talked about uh, earlier about linking up the the repeaters. Uh, uh, if you have the Ethernet board uh, installed. And again, that is something, uh, as far as I know, usually repeater owners, when they purchase the uh, DR2X, uh, they do go ahead and purchase that, uh, that IMRS board uh, because you're, you know, you're able to connect repeaters. And I'm trying to remember how many you can connect. I know there's a group out in California that they have like seven repeaters uh, up and down the coast that are all connected through the IMRS board, the Ethernet board, and they're on their own LAN. I mean, that is just, if you think about that, you know, you're in your house and you have all your computers connected uh, to your local area network there on your router. Can you imagine doing that uh, with repeaters up and down the coast? Um, so yeah, it allows the repeater uh, operator to link multiple repeaters over a wide area network using the internet. Um, because of the reliability shortcomings inherent with WAN or wide area network connections, uh, such as the internet, the DR2X incorporates direct connectivity between repeaters, permitting a variety of networking environments. Uh, another thing that you can do, and this is one of those topics where you could talk about it all night, is, for example, say you have uh, seven repeaters up and down the coast out in California. I don't know, say San Diego and Los Angeles are, are linked, okay? And there's a bunch of other cities that are linked. And say you're going to have a, a net, or s for some reason you just want to communicate between Los Angeles and San Diego, but not all the other ones that are connected, you could actually configure... Uh, the repeater in Los Angeles and, and San Diego with a, a certain code that would allow these operators in San Diego to talk to Los Angeles without causing any traffic uh, on the other cities. Uh, but again, I'm not going to go into detail with that. It's just another cool feature of uh, installing the IMRS uh, Ethernet board. All right, so what does the Wires X software do? Well, it connects your HRA200 or the PDN to the Wires X network, okay? Uh, it allows local hams to connect through the node to other nodes or rooms around the world. It provides a way to find out what nodes or rooms are available. Another cool feature about the Wires X software, you can actually text or type to people that uh, have the WireZX software on their uh, laptops or, or on their um, uh, desktops. Now, hopefully you can see this screen uh, pretty good. Um, this is the WireZX software. And uh, again, the, the texting feature over here in this area, uh, if you look closely, um, you can see here Virginia. So we were in the Virginia room at this time, at this point, and there was a conversation going on um, between these two guys. Looks like somebody, uh, once they were out of the Virginia room, they went to the America Link room, started complaining about how the audio was horrible. But uh, yeah, you just basically type in what you want to say here, hit the send button and it will send it out and anybody else that is connected either in the Virginia room or wherever you're currently connected, at this point it was Virginia, uh, they'll be able to carry on a chat conversation here. Another feature of the uh, WiresX software, you can actually see who's connecting uh, to uh, the, uh, the room. Again, we're in the Virginia room and we can see who's connecting uh, where they're coming from. Now up here, uh, this shows the actual user that is actually keyed up and transmitting. It actually shows what mode he's in. 
okay? So he's in the digital narrow node mode, and it also shows what radio he's transmitting from. And this is information that is incorporated into the packet of data that is sent out. Also, you see his latitude and longitude. There again, that is other information that is incorporated, his call sign, his radio type, his latitude and longitude. All of this information is incorporated into that packet of data that is going out. Through, through the, uh, the radio, it will actually calculate the difference between his position and the end user's position, and it will give you a mileage. On the left side of the screen, this is pretty important. Um, there's On the top, you can change this screen to say different things. Uh, in this case, just for the demo purposes, <coughs> I had it set up to show what nodes were connected uh, into the Virginia room at this particular moment. The middle screen shows what's called a user ID. Okay? Now, if you remember earlier, and it also so, shows the DTMF ID. So in the earlier slides, we talked about Yesu, how they uh, would assign you, uh, if you had an HRI 200, they would assign you a, a, uh, a room number and a room, um, I'm sorry, a room number and uh, an ID. In, in the case of a PDN node, you would only get an ID. So the middle screen in this case shows the assigned IDs. The bottom screen actually shows you the room and the ID, the room ID. Now this, this gets confusing sometimes for people. But the, the number that everybody's assigned, whether you have a node, or I'm sorry, a PDN node or a room, everybody is assigned a number. Now, if you look up here, you'll notice I have a number 11625, and it says KC8 MTV repeater. Well, this is my ID and ID number that I was assigned. If you had a PDN node, you would also have a user ID and a user ID number. Now, since I'm using an HRI 200, I have been assigned an additional number. And I apologize, I did not grab a screen capture of that. Uh, yeah, I didn't grab a screen capture of that. But my room ID is Virginia. My user ID is KC8MTV-repeater. My room ID is Virginia. And my room ID number is 21625. My user ID number is 11625. What is the difference? Well, if I am... Uh, we'll say uh, Mike, W4MAF, if he wants to connect to the Virginia room using a DTMF ID, he can actually program in his, uh, his handset 21625, and he will go into the Virginia room. Okay? If Mike, and then he could join anybody else that's in there talking. If Mike decides, well, I don't want to talk to the Virginia room. I just want to talk to somebody in Waynesboro over the repeater. Well, then Mike could connect to 11625. He would put the Virginia room on hold. He wouldn't disconnect them. He would just put them on hold. And then Mike would connect directly to the repeater through the WiresX network. And then he could talk out the repeater to somebody in Waynesboro. Once Mike disconnects from his house or wherever he's at, it will automatically revert everybody from the Virginia room, and they would be uh, talking out the repeater again. Again, there's a lot that you can go into with this WiresX software, and you can talk about it all night with all the features and everything. 
and we just don't have time to do that. I, I guess I got to get moving here. Didn't realize how late it was. All right, suppose. Okay, let's go back to the previous screen real quick. On your WiresX software, this shows all of the rooms, okay? All of the rooms that are connected. What if you don't have the WiresX software and you're on your radio? Well, guess what? If you have a 991 and you enter the, uh, the, uh, the node, you can actually see what rooms just like the software. Well, I don't have an FT991. Okay, well, that's fine. If you've got a, a, a mobile radio, FTM400, same thing. It shows you what rooms are available. Same thing on the FT2 or the FT3. It shows you what rooms are available. All right, again, personal simplex node. Um, you know, it, it, it's, it's nowadays with, with the expense of an HRI 200, it, it's just, it's not, uh, it's not really necessary to have a, uh, an HRI 200. You can get away with a personal node, have the, uh, the, the firmware update, connect right to your laptop. Now, in this case, this picture here, you could actually hook up an external antenna outside on your roof and you could be walking around your yard and talking through this HT out through the uh, the Wires X network. Now, this this uh, particular graphic shows how you're actually going through the Yesu servers. Again, the the um, the Wires X network is the actual network that <coughs> uh, Yesu came up with to tie all these radios together. All right, Wires X nodes in Virginia. Look at this. These are all nodes in Virginia that are active. These are, what, two days ago when I did this uh, graphic? These are nodes in Virginia that were active two days ago. So here again is the Virginia room. That's the room ID. And here is what I was talking about. The DTMF ID is 21625. My user ID for the repeater is 11625, but the node or the room is 21625. I've called that room the Virginia room. Well, let's go down here and look at Richmond. There's Richmond. That's the room ID. The room DTMF ID is 68927. You guys might want to write that down. So if you ever want to connect using your uh, microphone, you would enter 68927. <clears throat> and then you can, uh, on the, uh, on the uh, side, you can put information as to what the, the room's about. Uh, the Richmond Amateur Radio Club shows what repeater it's on. Uh, I just threw something in there, but uh, that's just a comment section that you would only see if you had the WiresX software running on your desktop or laptop. <clears throat> All right, we talked about fusion. Fusion repeaters with WiresX connected to them in Virginia. This was two days ago. These are all of the repeaters in Virginia that have an active WiresX node. There's Richmond. I don't know what that one is. WA4MAS. I'm not familiar with that one. Um, let's see here. Let's see if there's any other ones I can think of. Yeah, I don't know if I recognize any of these other ones. Uh, Stanton. I'm not sure who that is, K3RFP. But there's a lot of activity here uh, with repeaters that have wires X connected. All right, moving along. Um, W4MAF uh, and I were going to uh, try to do a little demo here. Um, Mike, if you want to jump in there. Um, Whiskey 4 Mike Alpha Foxtrot to KC8 MTV in Waynesboro. All 
All right, this is KC8MTV coming to you from uh, Bear Den in the Virginia room. Hey there, Kevin. W4MAF Mike uh, coming to you from the W4RAT repeater. Officially now on the Virginia room. Got you loud and clear here. All right, Mike, I appreciate that. Stand by. I'm going to... Uh, change some settings here uh, on the radio so they, they can actually see uh, the the node. This is KC8 on the TV. All right, so if you look here on the uh, FT991 that I have here, uh, what we're going to do, and, and again, I, I really wish I had more time to go through more details, uh, but <clears throat> what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take the FT991, which is currently transmitting in C4FM mode. You can see that up there and uh, we got the digital narrow. I'm going to change this and I'm going to actually connect to the node of the uh, the 145.290 repeater by pressing the X and what this is going to do this is going to take us and show us what room we are connected to and how many nodes are actually connected uh, to the the Virginia room. All right, let's move along here. <clears throat> All right, best practices for anything digital, amateur radio practices, and I know in the uh, Rats Club meeting they talked about this briefly. Uh, th there is something that you have to realize that when you are going through uh, the internet with any kind of communications you have a delay factor. It may not be that noticeable uh, but there is a delay factor. When you're talking radio to radio or radio to repeater to radio uh, it, it seems pretty much instantaneous. However when you're going through a WiresX network or the Yesu WiresX network you have to learn to pause. Now the the standard that seems to be pretty much uh, uh, being utilized uh, across the um, the uh, Yesu uh, network is to pause uh, before speaking and after speaking. So for example uh, one thing that we do especially on the uh, Saturday night uh, C4FM digital net is you would key up, pause, 1001 in your head, state your traffic, pause, and then unkey. And that pause one second before and after, uh, it, it just makes sure that all of your, your data is captured and relayed across the network. Because remember, you're, you're not going analog anymore, you're going digital you're sending packets of data, zeros and ones, and you want to be sure you're, you're capturing all that for the users at the other end. So again, just make, make a mental note. Whenever you're talking um, across a WiresX network, now this is not C4FM simplex or C4FM across the repeater. Okay, This is when you're going through a node across the WiresX network. You want to key up, pause, State your traffic, pause one second again, and then unkey. I know in the in the graphic here they, they say a second or two. Um, I, I guess you could do for two seconds. That, that probably wouldn't be bad either. In a round table, it's kind of important also, especially because you get into some of these rooms, there's a lot of people, right? And it's kind of uh, critical to say, uh, you know, um, I had a good day operating uh, soda. How was your day? Uh, Mike, W4MAF, over to you, sir. So pass it off to the person and, and recognize them with your call sign uh, so you know there's not a, a, an overlap in transmissions. Understand and follow the repeater trustees' procedures for connecting and disconnecting the remote connections. <coughs> this is very important. Uh, not only for respect to the uh, repeater trustee, the local club, but anybody else listening. Um, we've had issues here locally, uh, and it, it, it's, it's just a learning curve, that's all. 
uh, nobody's done anything wrong or broken any laws, uh, but they may connect the repeater uh, up to America Link, we'll say, for example. And I know Mike W4MAF talked about this earlier with the timeout feature. Uh, but if you're going to utilize America Link or any other links that you want to connect to, that's fine. That's what this is all about. Just be sure that when you're done, that you uh, disconnect from that particular room and let the room return back to its uh, default or, uh, you know, default it back yourself. Um, it is always good also. Uh, as we discussed earlier, and I forgot to put it on the slide, but uh, is the repeater in use? Okay, that's common sense. Uh, we do the same thing on HF. Uh, is this frequency in use? Well, you should do it with the repeater also before you go switching rooms uh, because somebody may have a conversation going and one of the other guys went to the bathroom or went to get a drink and you just disconnected them. So always ask, is this repeater in use? Or is this room in use? Uh, be patient with uh, <coughs> out-of-town visitors. Uh, I'm going to add um, uh, new users in there too uh, because they may not be familiar with our uh, procedures and our protocols for our local setup and how we have it. Be a good example and uh, most of all be courteous and don't get upset. I have to stress that. We, we had a club up in Ohio, and um, it was so frustrating because I, I, uh, I was part of the activities group, and uh, I tried to get the, the less active hams back involved into the club, and it was so frustrating because they, they were told, or they basically were scolded over the air, and, you know... Whoever does that, <laughs> they need to go see the principal because it humiliated that person for one. He was a new ham. He didn't realize you don't scold people over the air. And I, I'm just adding that in as my two cents worth. We're amateur radio operators. Hopefully we're better than that. And we need to be good examples uh, because you are representing not only yourself as a uh, ham yeah. operator, but you are also representing your local club and your local repeater trustee. Uh, so, in review, the, the, the cool thing again, what Yesu has done with this uh, system fusion of radios is, you know, it was built from the ground up. They incorporated the C4FM um, into, the, uh, into the radios, and they've just done a, a fantastic job. No code plugs to worry about. No programming. <clears throat> it is seriously plug and play. I'm not going to get into too much detail other than you can take out your radio out of the box, plug it in, hook it up to your antenna, and you can get on and transmit in C4FM. If the repeater that you're connecting to is connected to uh, a, a, a wires X network, you can just key up and start talking. No code plugs, no uh, uh, any of that other stuff. The audio quality is fantastic. If you have not heard it, get with somebody that does have a C4FM enabled radio. Have them do a demo for you. And it is becoming the fastest growing digital voice mode out there. Um, I know Yesu has done a, a fantastic job with their marketing on this. And... Uh, it's, uh, it's really helped out a lot of hams, uh, especially with their pricing of their, uh, their HTs and uh, their mobile radios uh, that have C4FM uh, capabilities. Um, again, we talked about earlier how having a node or a room uh, connected up to your repeater, it can really bring in a lot more traffic. Um, it's, it's a great option if you live in an HOA. Oh my gosh, I had a, a ham buddy of mine up in Ohio. Uh, and the thing was, he lived in this HOA, and then he got into amateur radio. And he was really frustrated that uh, he was not able to put up an outdoor antenna. And uh, so he got himself uh, an HRA 200, set up a node inside his house. And he had a J-pole uh, up in his attic, and... Uh, he was he was loving that. 
Um, it's a great alternative if the HF bands are, you know, not doing too good and you want to talk some DX. Um, it is so, it is so uh, cool to be driving down the road and going across 64 to, to Charlottesville <coughs> and uh, I keyed up um, and uh, there was a, I threw out my call and there was a guy from the UK had connected up to the repeater and he was driving up, <laughs> he said he was driving up the M1, I think is what he called it. Uh, he was uh, he was uh, going out for groceries, and uh, he and I started talking, and it was it was the coolest thing. Um, and and like any other digital mode, what a great way to get young people involved. Uh, this is a, a great way to get younger people involved. Uh, all right, I got a uh, another brief uh, little demo here before we wrap it up. One of the coolest things about uh, Fusion is the ability to actually send pictures. Yes, you can send pictures using the C4FM protocol or the C4FM mode. And the quality is fantastic. There is a, uh, a camera microphone that you can purchase. And um, the, the, the thing behind it, well, I won't talk too much about it. Let me just go into the demo here and... Uh, I'll show you. Um, I may, let's see here if we can. Uh, da, 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 da. I've got to change my speaker output settings here. Uh, let's see here. Mike, I might need your help here, buddy, because I don't have access to that speaker uh, button. Okay, yeah. I. Uh, hmm. Let's see here how we can do it. Well, uh, fiddle. Yeah, I don't have access to that speaker button. So That's where you need to make your the top of your screen disappear, showing the uh, Zoom presentation, if you recall. Say that again. There you go. Um, I, you made that disappear the other day. Yeah, and then I couldn't get it back. Um, hang on a second. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, was it speaker? Uh, the audio settings. I shared the... Yep. It's or where I did the share screen, but I wanted to share audio too. Yep. I wouldn't um, worry about that for now. I just uh, turned the volume up and play it. I think you're issue will be getting the play button to activate. There you go. All go right. for it. We'll, we'll see. I'll turn my volume up here. Hopefully everybody can hear it okay. We will. Whoops. Wrong button. Hello, everybody. This is KC8MTV coming to you live from Central Virginia. I just wanted to uh, put together a quick little video here and uh, show everybody how to download a picture from a wires X node. In this case here, we're going to be downloading a picture from the KCA MTV 145.290 megahertz repeater located at Bear Den here in Augusta County, Virginia. Uh, we are connected um, to the repeater, which in turn is connected to the wires X node number 21625, which is the Virginia room. So I'm going to show you step by step here what you need to do if you have an FTM 400 and uh, you can give this a try. All right, so the first thing we're going to do, we're going to press and hold the DX button. And what this is going to do is this is going to connect us into the node. Okay, so you see we've connected to the KC8 MTV repeater and we've connected to the node. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go into the Virginia room And within the Virginia room of the node, there are several features here. Emergency, news station, local news, and international news. I'm not going to go into details in this video what this all means, but I will do a follow-up video. So for the picture downloading demo, we are going to select local news. Now 
Notice I clicked twice there, once to select local news and then again to um, activate that feature. So now we're connected into the KC8M TV repeater local news. Uh, let's see if we can clear this picture up for you. Uh, there we go. All right, so now we're going to click on the KC8M TV repeater. And what that's going to do is that's going to open up the news station for local news, which would be in the KC8M TV repeater uh, footprint. So we'll click on news station. Now we're going to download, okay? For this purpose, we're going to download. I activated it or selected it. Now we're gonna activate it by double clicking. And now we're going to select PICT, P-I-C-T, and we're going to click it again. And what's gonna happen is, you notice right here it says download. So it's downloading the menu of pictures that are currently residing on the HRI 200 uh, node, or yeah, the node. So we're going to pick, oh, let's see here. We'll, we'll pick, uh, pick this first picture here. So now what it's gonna do is, you'll see the download arrow, and it says download. Now, anybody else with an FTM 400, what they would see on their radio is, I believe it says downloading data. Uh, it, it, I think it actually says KC8MTV-repeater downloading data. So that's what somebody else is going to see while this is happening. Um, this process usually takes about 40 seconds. Um, I think the shortest download I've had is like 20 seconds and then the longest download I've had is like 45 seconds. Um, I'm not sure what that is based on. The, uh, the uh, pixel ratio is it's 320 by 240. Uh, so I'm assuming that what, what that means is we've got uh, uh, three, 360 by 240 uh, in our uh, um, ratio here. So, you can't have anything over 40, I believe it's 40, 40 or 44 kilobytes. Um, so these pictures are rather small. Obviously they have to be because you're, you're uh, sending this data over the air, um, which I'm not sure what the baud rate is, um, but I imagine it's like the old dial up days where you had 300 baud modems. Uh, if you guys remember those, um, but it, it doesn't take too long. Now what I'll do is I'll put together another video uh, on how to actually upload pictures. Uh, you can do it from either a micro SD card or you can do it from the Yesu camera mic. And if you don't have one of those Yesu camera mics, you got to get one just, just to play around with it. Uh, there's a lot of cool features that you can you can do with that and um, you know for emergency communications if the cell phones ever go down you've always got a camera mic that you can uh, relay information or uh, take pictures of uh, whatever may be going on out there uh, I think that's why Yesu originally developed that microphone is for emergency communications okay so the picture is completed the download, and there it is. It just happens to be a picture of me. Now, what I'm gonna do here now is there's a couple other guys on the radio. And so I'm gonna forward this picture to everybody that is listening to the repeater right now and has their FTM 400, uh, the FTM300, the FT2D, the FT3, uh, those are the radios that are compatible with, uh, with pictures. I wish I would have picked a better picture, but <laughs> again, this is just for demo purposes. So what it's doing now is, you'll notice up here in the left-hand corner, it says to all, and it's sending it out. And again, what's happening here is, the radio 
has downloaded the picture from the uh, the repeater from the HRA 200 uh, the node at the repeater site it's downloaded it to my FDM 400 to the micro SD card now what I'm doing is I'm forwarding this picture and I'm sending it out to everybody that is um, uh, listening within listening distance of the repeater I could also have changed this all <clears throat> to a specific call sign. And that's really cool because I could actually send this picture to a specific user and not everybody would get it. Uh, there again, that's a cool feature with the uh, Yesu um, uh, Fusion radios is that you can uh, send pictures uh, or, or messages, uh, texts, uh, and you can even have one-on-one -on -one conversations with specific users. Uh, and it's based on the radio ID that is hardware encoded into the radio. Um, so uh, that's a, another great feature. It also allows you, um, if you're a DR1X or a DR2X repeater owner, you can also block uh, people, malicious interference, etc., um, of users that are popping up on the um, C4FM portion of, of the, uh, the repeater. You can actually block them uh, based on their hardware encoded radio ID. Okay, it says completed. So what that means is that picture has gone out to everybody that has had their radio tuned in. So that's how you do picture downloading and uh, picture forwarding. We'll do another vi uh, video here shortly um, showing you how to do some other features. This is KC8 MTV. All right, that wraps up the presentation on the Yesu System Fusion family of radios. C4FM digital mode or protocol and the Wires X network. I appreciate uh, everybody's time and uh, really appreciate being able to bring this presentation to you. Well, this is KC8 MTV.